Hi, we're here in the studio today to show you how to do our standard lime washing technique. We're using the colour Nullarbor, sharing all of our tips on how to achieve a great result over three coats. The first thing we do is give the paint a really good stir, making sure there's no pigment left at the bottom of the bucket. Dip the brush into the paint, approximately one quarter of the way onto the bristles. Give a quick flick of the wrist to remove any extra paint, then we're ready to go. First, starting at the top of the wall, but away from the edge, we start spreading out the paint, blending back into the edge of the wall. We're spreading the paint out as far as it naturally goes, with gentle, easy but firm strokes, in a random way to create cloud patterns. These cloud patterns offer an easy way to achieve texture. As you can see, we're spreading the paint out in all directions, making sure to leave soft edges. You don't need to do this with a lot of pressure. It should be an easy, light application while making sure the paint is spread out as far as it goes naturally. Now we begin painting our next cloud, once again giving the paint a bit of a stir. It's possible to work left to right across the wall but we find that starting your next cloud in a different section of the wall, as you can see here, is a great way to create more texture, due to the dry edging that can occur with this technique. You'll notice we don't place the brush full of paint right next to our last cloud. This helps avoid having to overwork the overlay area of the paint on the wall. We then merge our clouds by pulling the paint edges of both clouds together with the brush. Once again, we're working the paint out firmly but with an easy stroke. Stretch the paint out first, then lightly pattern with your brush. While cutting in, it's also important not to start with your brush fully loaded with paint at the edge of the wall. Instead, start a little bit away from the edge, then pull the brush across, as you can see here. With an even pressure, we then spread it out as before, using a light, easy stroke to make sure the paint is evenly spread across the wall. It's a good idea to stand back and check to see how the paint is looking, if it's evenly distributed and you're happy with the technique. Once again, we're starting away from the last cloud, this time in the opposite top corner. You can paint from left to right if you prefer, it's up to you. We like doing it this way, as we feel it creates a more interesting texture. Also make sure that you're cutting in correctly on each coat, pulling the paint into edges or corners. When painting against cornices and wood trims, it's also a good idea to use a painter's quality masking tape and tape off all areas you don't wish to paint. This will give you a professional looking edge and make the application much easier.
can see here a close-up of how to spread the paint, and how it looks when the correct amount of paint is applied. You can see it's achieved by using a light and gentle stroke, naturally spreading out the paint. It's better not to make your edges too straight up and down. Vary the shapes of the clouds, giving a more random looking texture. It should be a quick and easy technique. Don't overthink it. You can trust the process. We're after a perfectly imperfect finish. Remember, we're building up the paint coat by coat. You don't need to get it perfect on the first coat. It's normal to look a bit transparent on this first coat. It will also look a bit darker while wet than dry. Start and finish your clouds in a different section of the wall, alternating where your clouds finish. On the second and any subsequent coats, the paint will absorb a little more into the previous coat. If you already love the look, feel free to stop at two coats. The third coat will give more opacity, but can sometimes make the paint look less textured. Stir the paint often. Paint in clouds. Stretch the paint out as far as it naturally goes. Have fun and trust the process.